Welcome to Greg's Maker Corner. In this video, I'm gonna be showing the Clipper expansion board, and I'm gonna be adding this to my Voron 0.1. I wanna add some extra cooling, a couple thermistors, and maybe some future expansion down the road. So uh, this board is gonna to apply to anybody that's running Clipper, not just uh, the Voron folks, although that's kind of where this uh, came out of. So if you're interested in doing something similar and you wanna learn how to add it and what this can do for you, uh, please stay tuned. And please like and subscribe as always if you find this video helpful. Thanks for watching. I've been working on some cooling. As you can see here, I've got some cooling fans set up with 5015 fans. More on that in a future video. But I, I wanted to add this cooling just to augment what's going on here with the uh, blower fans that are here that I find they do a really good job when they work, but sometimes they have issues, right? And sometimes they struggle for uh, just keeping things cool. So I wanted to tie this in initially, tie these fans in to my SKR board as well as uh, my power supply. And as I thought about it more and looked around, I, I noticed that um, the MOSFETs on the SKR mini uh, board that, that's used in these is not always the greatest. As I was chatting in the Discord, uh, a couple people mentioned this expander board and I'm like, oh, okay. And then, um, so I eventually took a look at it, ordered one, and then I talked with uh, Tim at 99, Timothy Abraham, who's the guy who designed this, just to learn more about it. So I want to make sure I give Tim at 99 credit on this board because this is a really nice little board. He's a mechanical engineer by trade, and he, he pointed out that, you know, this is one of the very first designs that he's made. It's got a lot of really cool capabilities on it. There are four different MOSFETs here that you can tap into, and they're all PWM enabled as well. So. This is going to be very useful for my purpose, which is going to be driving fans on it. But you could you could even add um, heaters or really anything else that can benefit from PWM. Uh, there's also a NeoPixel um, spot on it. So if you want to power uh, NeoPixels and you know change LED lights on your machine, uh, that's a possibility. There's a GPIO pin if you want to add maybe a button or a, some other kind of sensor. And then there's a couple of uh, spots for thermistors. This board's got a lot of little plugins that I think for a lot of people who may not have that space available on their um, their current MCU or, or you know printer board, uh, this is a great option. I encourage you to buy from one of the Discord vendors. There's a lot of good vendors and they're a little more known than maybe what you'd find on eBay. And expect to spend around maybe 20 to $25 US for one of these. The great thing about Clipper is that you can also add really just about anything. So it doesn't have to be a small little board like this. You could also add just even another printer board altogether if you wanted to. But given my space constraints, I wanted to use something small like this. And here you can see a close-up of the spring terminals for the four MOSFET outputs. Um, so you've got, you can flip it over just to see how they're wired. You've got a voltage in, and then you've got the, uh, the pin number. So that way you know how to reference it um, from Clipper. You've also got your voltage in here. You've also got a fuse here, similar to what's put on a lot of the big tree or other um, printer boards. Then you're gonna connect it to your Raspberry Pi through here, with, which is a micro USB. And then turning the board across here, you can see there's, um, yeah, so here's the thermistor pins. There's two of them. And there are a few other connectors here that are gonna be handy. For all the details, go ahead and check the link to the board in the description of the video to get the schematic information. So there's a couple of options for mounting this, and I'm gonna go ahead and probably use this one. Basically, this will just fit right over it. I've went ahead and tightened the screw onto the mount, and I think I've located a spot that I wanna put it on. Now, if you're like me, you've only got a little bit of room to work with, especially on a Voron Zero. So I could probably find a spot down here but I think I'd rather keep it on the back. So I'm gonna work on kind of maneuvering it in here. Um, and I, I think I can do that just fine. I've just gotta um, work it into here. So I've got this loom zip tied down pretty tight, so I might have to adjust that a little bit, but no problem. But regardless of the printer, um, you're, just, you're gonna have to obviously find a spot to mount it. I am then going to put, so you can see the bottom here, I'm gonna take some of this tape, mounting tape, just like you do with all the other electronics put it on the bottom, and then I'm gonna go ahead and tape it down once I find a good spot for it. And something else I always like to do is mark the voltage, so you don't wanna get those crisscrossed. I just looked at the bottom and then I marked the marked it accordingly, positive and negative. Okay, I went ahead and mounted it. I've got it right here and it's um, taped down nice and tight. So next thing I need to do is power 
the vol uh, put the voltage to this. So as you can see here, I've got a voltage in. Um, basically, I need to run it from either, I can tap into the 24 volt input here on the on the uh, converter that powers the Pi, or I could just go straight against the power supply down here. So I think that because my converter is just right here and it's really close, um, that's gonna be a better choice. So I am gonna just tap it off of the input voltage here. So it's gonna be running parallel, so there really should be no impact at all. Before I go too far, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my USB cable, as you can see here. Now this is a fairly long cable. Um, Ideally, you want something a lot shorter than this, so because otherwise it's just gonna continue to clutter things up. But then you're just gonna plug the other end of it, end of it into your Pi here. So I'm gonna go ahead and tidy that cable up a little bit and then plug it in. So I've plugged it into this port. It really doesn't matter which USB plug you use. And then I went ahead and zip tied it to the rest of the rat's nest that's in here. So as long as you can fit the back panel on. Okay, next up, I'm gonna go ahead and cut a couple of 20 gauge or so wires, and then I'm gonna use these little connectors that are gonna fit right into here. All right, I was originally thinking 20 gauge wire, 20 AWG, but I think I'm gonna go 18. But this should be this should be fine for what I'm gonna be running off of it, which is basically fans, thermistors, and you know maybe a couple other accessories. All right, you can see here I've got a couple of different tools. This first one's gonna allow me to strip the wire. This one's gonna let me put the ferrules on, and this one will let me put the uh, terminals on. And what I do is I just kind of poke it through there and then you want to be able to see just a tiny bit of wire at the top. And then you're going to take your crimpers. I like these Titan ones. And then I'm going to go, so there's a red, blue, and a yellow, and that's basically color coded for the size of terminal that you want. And you're going to set that in there just right. And you want to be able to see just a little bit of it coming through and then give it a good squeeze. Now you should have a nice crimp and I always do the the wiggle test if you see the wire moving around when you wiggle it then you need to recrimp it poke the wire through check it and then give it a good squeeze and wiggle test okay now I've got a couple of these ferrules here out of my ferrule kit and the link for that is in the description if you want to check it out and very similarly I'm gonna just kind of poke my wire through and then I'm going to take my crimpers and I'm going to insert just the metal part into here. I'm going to squeeze and then now I've got a crimp. Okay, got a nice square crimp. You want to, you want this to be as square as possible and of course you don't want your wire to be moving so do the wiggle test again. It should be good. At this point I'm going to go ahead and connect the ferrule into the spring terminal here and you should just be able to unscrew that and slide your ferrule in. And once you get it in, just tighten it down real good and make sure you get it in the right one. So the red goes into the positive here. And same drill for the negative or the ground. And now we've got those in. So now we just need to route these so we can connect them. So now we just need to get these connected here on the input side. And all I'm gonna do here is just loosen these up. And then I'm going <clears> to <throat> slide these in. Okay, those look to be pretty tight. You want to make sure there's no wiggling around because otherwise these could arc and uh, you can end up with some melted connections. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on this one. And these really aren't an absolute necessity. You could just run the bare wire in here too if you want, as long as it's... <clears throat> and they're pretty good and tight, you shouldn't have to worry about it. Just want to avoid that possibility of, of having it loose so it's and where it's wiggling. All right, there we go. Now, the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is my fans. And for this part, uh, I've got two fans in the case right now. I'm going to go ahead and connect them to the same, actually to the same uh, MOSFET that does PWM because I want them uh, to run in parallel, or to, <clears throat> yeah, to run in parallel and to be powered by the same PWM. Now I may add additional fans as well later down the road. I'm gonna go ahead and make a harness. I'm gonna use this 20 gauge wire. And I don't mean, need very much of it, just enough that I can um, solder to, the, to both ends and then put ferrules on the other end and connect them to the board. So I've got plenty of fan wire here. 
All right, so in order to make the harness, I'm gonna first cut the insulation off these fan wires. And I'm gonna make them a little bit longer than you might normally have, because we're gonna be twisting them together for this. Okay, next up, <clears throat> I'm gonna take the positive leads on both fans and I'm just gonna kind of twist them together as best as I can. And then I'll, I'll do the same thing for the black. And once you get those connected, what I like to do, put a little bit of tin them with a little bit of solder. It'll help keep them together. <clears throat> Next thing I'm gonna do is take my red and black wire that I cut, I'm gonna put some heat shrink on there. And if you don't have heat shrink, you can just use tape. <clears throat> And then I'm going to tin the end of the tip here with solder. Just get a good glob on there. <clears throat> and then after that, I'm just going to take my other my red wire, and then I'm going to join those wires. Oops, it's not a bad idea to to use pliers. So that's a pretty good joint, so I'm happy with that. <clears throat> and then I'm just gonna slide my heat shrink over like that. And then I'll take my soldering iron, the barrel. I'll just hold it on the heat shrink, whoops. And that should shrink right up. Sometimes, sometimes I use a heat gun, but with just a couple little joints like this, it's, you can just use the barrel, it gets hot enough. <clears throat> All right, now we're just going to repeat for the black wire. Okay. All right, that's a pretty good joint. And there are, um, sometimes I'll use a tool like this to help join wires, which can be really handy. That's pretty good. Now we're ready to put the ferrules on the end of these and then we can plug them in. I use a little bit smaller ferrule for these. Same drill as before. Do the wiggle test and we're good. Went ahead and rounded the wires a little bit just so they're a little bit neater, just zip tie them here, no big deal. And now I'm going to put them in the spring terminal. I'll just loosen this up and make sure you get the polarity right. So the plus, I went ahead and marked it. It's where it says VN, voltage N. And the same thing with the negative. And then also take note, this is M0. So that's the, <clears throat> I already forgot which pin that is, but I'll be able to look up the schematic online. All right, so that is pretty much it from the hardware side for the fans at least. Now I still gotta do the thermistors. Okay, now I've got these glass bead thermistors. I'm gonna use two of them. One of them I'm gonna put near my um, MCU here. I just wanna kinda get an idea of how much or how warm you know, the MCU is getting. Another thing you'll notice is that my thermistor wire is pretty stinking long. So I definitely don't need that much length. Um, I'm not gonna cover how I shorten the wire, but basically I'm, when I locate it, I'm gonna trim it and then I'm gonna re-solder it together and then I'm just gonna reuse this connection and plug it into the thermistor, one of the thermistor connections. Okay, so I went ahead and just zip tied it to this motor wire here. I didn't wanna hang it directly over these heat sinks because that might give me a false uh, idea of what the temperature really is. So, um, so I thought that was a pretty good spot. It's right over the board, should be rough enough of an idea. All right, now that I've got everything shortened, I'm going to go ahead and plug it into T0. It's at the top of the board. Doesn't matter on the polarity, it's a thermistor. All right, for the chamber resistor, I'm just going to go ahead and zip tie it to this. A lot of a lot of people are using the umbilical and you would see it on the back, you know, somewhere back here. So I think that's pretty common location for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie it here. I went ahead and zip tied that in and it's uh, pretty discreet. You don't even really notice it's there. And now I've just got to go ahead and shorten the wires again and connect it to the board. Okay, I've got those shortened and now I'm going to plug them in to T1. 
So T1 will be my chamber thermistor. And there you have it. I've got the clipper expansion board installed. I've got the thermistors connected and I've got one here above my board. I've got one um, running up the, the umbilical here and that'll go in the chamber. And then I've got my voltage in uh, running from my Raspberry Pi power supply, 24 volt input side. And then I've got my, my fans that I've connected. So one thing that I always do is double check all the polarities because you don't want smoke. I've double checked all the polarity and now I'm going to plug it in and make sure everything looks good and there's no electrical issues. And then I'll go on to configuring it in Clipper. And I'm gonna look for LEDs and, and hopefully not see any smoke. Okay, I see LEDs coming on, which is good. I don't see or smell smoke, which is also good. All right, next up, I'm just gonna be following the directions here on the um, link, and I'll put that in the description. So I've already connected the board via USB, and now I'm, I believe I have a pre-flash board. I'm gonna find out in a minute. Um, and if I don't, I'll have to go through entering DFU mode and flashing it. But I'm gonna go ahead and do the LS USB and see what happens. Okay, the good news is my particular board did come flash, so I don't have to go through flashing it with clipper. So the, the reason I know that is because on the directions, it says I need to run this LS mode or this LS command, and I should find a device with STM32F042 by six. And you can see right there when I ran that command that I do indeed have that. This is Greg from the future, and I did have some issues. Even though my board was indeed flashed with Clipper, it was flashed with an older version, so I still had to eventually go through the DFU mode. I would recommend just going ahead and doing all the steps for DFU mode, even if your board does come pre-flashed. All right, so I've launched Putty. I've changed directory to the Clipper, and now I'm typing in Make Menu Config. I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to match my settings to what's in the documentation here. So we're gonna go ahead and pick the STM32. We're gonna pick, we're gonna change this to the F042. Um, we're gonna change this to internal clock. Communication USB. I'm gonna change this to USB on PA910. I had that wrong. And then that should be about it. GPI, okay. This I think we want to change. Based on what I'm seeing, this should be nothing. So just backspace that out if it's there. Okay, so once again, just double check that everything looks the same. All right, now that I've confirmed everything, I'm gonna go ahead and quit, and I'm gonna say yes to save it. And after that, I'm gonna type make clean, hit enter. And then I'm gonna, this is where I'm gonna need that um, ID. In order to get into DFU mode, you're gonna have to power down and put a jumper over this little, these two little boot pins that you can see in this blue highlight. Then you wanna go ahead and power back up and you'll be able to enter into DFU mode and grab the list of DFUs. Okay, next up we're gonna run DFU-util-list like the directions say, and we're gonna get a bunch of stuff here. So we're gonna wanna go ahead and grab that. And uh, I'm just gonna paste it into Notepad for now. This is kind of weird, but it's a step you have to do. So before we can actually compile the firmware and flash it, we have to remove the boot jumper on the, <clears throat> on the device while powered up. So I'm gonna come back over here. Everything's still running. I'm gonna gently remove that. And I'm gonna copy this ID from what I did when I did DFU list. And then I'm gonna paste it in here. I'm gonna hit it and everything should compile. If we did it right, and it should flash. Okay, that's good. Now it's gonna ask me for a password. So I type my password in, and now you can see it's actually going in and physically uploading. And then it went ahead and switched it back. So. Now I should have everything flash. So I've opened Visual Studio Code, which is my preferred editor. I paste it in from the GitHub, and now I'm just gonna go through here and make a few changes. Okay, and before I do too much with the fan and thermistor settings, I'm gonna come in here and copy what I, um, what I got from my list command, 
and then I'm going to overwrite what is in this file here. So I'm going to go ahead and here, I've got it on the clipboard, I'm going to paste. I'm going to double check, it looks like it matches now. And I also went ahead and entered the side fans. It's a fan generic, so I should be able to control that. Um, I was looking it up, I, I can control that through G-code or I should be able to see it on the dashboard. Okay, and now I'm just going to go ahead and save it as Clipper Expander. And that's based on the name that was in the directions and the example dot CFG. I'll go ahead and hit save. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and I went into my um, main sale and now I'm going to click the upload button. I'm going to upload the Clipper Expander and then I'm going to go into the printer.cfg file. Okay, I'm pretty much at the bottom. So I copied and pasted this and now I have to put in the correct file name. All right, so I went ahead and typed in the name of it and I'm going to hit save and restart. Okay, and now you can see that my new entries are here. So I've got the side fans. Yeah, the good news is my side fans are working. I hear them buzzing around. And to test those, all I did was I put the slider all the way over, which is showing up. I've also got some thermistors. Uh, they don't appear to be using the right value, so I'm going to have to look around and see what value I'm supposed to use for those. And this is really why I love the Discord so much, because uh, Timmit was able to help me figure out what this was, and it turns out it was a simple config setting. So when I went in here, the one thing that I forgot to put in here was expander. So it was trying to read maybe a different pin on a different board. So you have to have the syntax here whenever you're referencing the pin on the actual expander. So here are the readings that I'm getting now, which all look pretty much like I would expect. So um, I've got the chamber, the MCU, and that's those are just those glass thermistors that I put in. So. Just uh, really, again, a big thanks to Timmit for helping me work through this, and this is why I really like the Voron Discord. So uh, we all have our, our days sometimes, and it's great to have another set of eyes looking at things. Everything that you've seen here with uh, the, both the Voron and the Clipper Expander Board are all completely open source, and anyone can pretty much have a PCB made. They can uh, go buy this. You can buy it on AliExpress or other sites. However, if you'd really like to support the Voron design team, for making cool stuff like this, please do, and go to the vorondesign.com website to find out how to do that. There's a big donate button in the upper right hand corner of the website. So this Clipper Expander project has actually been a lot of fun and, and maybe a little frustrating along the way, but I really did enjoy it. And now I've got two side fans that I can run easily from uh, G-Code or while I'm printing, I can reference that. Um, I've also got some chamber thermistors and uh, a thermistor that can check my board temp very easily. So I'm really excited. I think this is a, a good value for 20 bucks and a little bit of uh, work just to get the thing configured and compiled. Hopefully this gives you some ideas on how you might be able to add a clipper expander to your setup and why you might want to do that. Future videos, I may add some additional fans. I may also add uh, a NeoPixel light strip. I'm really looking forward to playing around with this and uh, continue, continuing to utilize it. Thanks again for watching and uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And as always, please like and subscribe if you find this video useful. Thank you.